I would like to begin uh, uh, by thanking the organizers uh, for organizing this nice workshop and giving me this uh, opportunity to report about our, our recent uh, uh, research result, uh, which is uh, done uh, in collaboration with uh, Samir Murthy. So uh, in the previous session, uh, Bernard talked about uh, general formulation of localization in probability. Uh, in this talk, uh, I'm going to continue to talk about this localization in probability. Uh, here, uh, from, the, uh, from the title, you may be able to see the two keywords. One is uh, equivariant cohomology, uh, which is from the charge for that we use for localization. And the other is twisting uh, of, uh, of fields. This is useful for uh, computation of one loop determinant. So, yeah. Let me start with uh, general motivation. Uh, needless, needless to say, uh, spasmodic localization is a, a very powerful to tool for exact computation. And there have been many, many applications for various field theories in uh, various backgrounds in many uh, dimensions. And we have, we have been looking at many such examples uh, in uh, many talks in uh, our, this workshop. So ne uh, then the uh, natural question is, how about application to spore gravity? It could also possibly apply to the supergravity because the, the argument of supersymmetric localization principle is so general. One critical requirement is that uh, we need an official formulation of supergravity. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there's a restriction for such, form, uh, such a official formulation. For higher supersymmetric case, uh, we don't have such official supergravity, but uh, it is, uh, however, it is still fortunate that uh, up to n equal to symmetric, spot symmetric case, we have an official formulation of spogravity in terms of four-dimensional language. Uh, especially uh, n equal to, it is constructed uh, uh, so-called as a uh, super conformal construction in the uh, 1980s. And for Euclidean spogravity, uh, yeah, uh, David and uh, Valentin, uh, presented a, a paper which it turns out to be very useful for our, our application. Once we uh, perform this localization computation, then this will provide uh, an example of exact computation of spurability. Also, we will be able to see uh, quantum or exact holography relations. And there can be many uh, interesting examples that you may want to explore. But uh, here, um, our interest, physical interest, is in uh, the system of BPS black hole and to P for each ADS2 CFT1 correspondence. Let me briefly review about the uh, story of uh, black hole entropy formula. So, uh, black hole entropy formula was firstly uh, suggested by Becken and Hawking. Bekenstein and Hawking as the area of the near horizon geometry of the black hole. And later, uh, it received the statistical interpretation. The Strominger and Waffa showed that the counting the microstate of uh, string theory reproduces, uh, for the uh, BPS black hole case, reproduces the area law of uh, Bekenstein and Hawking. And yesterday, there was a nice talk by Professor Waffa. And, uh, but uh, there is a, uh, one caveat in this equality. Uh, this, this equality holds only for large charge limit. Uh, but for the finite charge, li charge case, the uh, entropy formula receives the quantum correction. And this demands us uh, to have the generalize generalization of uh, entropy function. For the extremal black hole case, uh, such uh, Generalization, I mean, entropy formula has been generalized by Ashok Sen, uh, so-called uh, quantum entropy function. And the definition is uh, given by this. 
uh, which is essentially a partition function in supergravity with a uh, Wilson loop uh, insertion. Uh, and uh, its boundary condition is given by the uh, near horizon geometry of the black hole. And uh, in general, for extremal black hole has uh, ADS2 factor as uh, its near horizon geometry. So ADS2 times some general geometry. But for the case of supersymmetric black hole, which is our uh, current interest, this geometry is ADS2 times S2. And ADS2 is topologically a uh, disk. And this Wilson loop wraps around the boundary of this Poincare uh, disk. And ADS2 geometry has uh, in, uh, infinite volume, so it has infrared divergences. So we introduce cutoff, and we, if we extract a finite value from this quantity, then this will define the quantum entropy uh, function. And uh, since uh, each suggestion, there have been uh, many successful tests uh, for perturbative quantum corrections. The, uh, those people uh, uh, computed uh, one loop computation on the uh, uh, Bonshell set point, and uh, agree that result agreed completely. I mean, it completely agrees with the uh, microstate, microstate counting. And not only for the perturbative uh, test, we also want to apply uh, the supersymmetric localization for the exact test of this quantum entropy function. For, to apply the supersymmetric localization, uh, we modified action by adding this Q exact term with the real parameter lambda. Here we uh, used a canonical choice of this uh, ferromionic variable V as the summation, summation of all the physical ferromions in the series. And this algebra of our fer ferromion symmetry closes into the compact bosonic symmetry we call H. And in our case, this will be L0 minus J0. Here, L, L0 is a rotation of the uh, uh, ADS2 disk, and J0 is a rotation of ADS2. And since, since this partition function is uh, independent of this real parameter lambda, and we can freely take lambda to be infinity, then the, new, uh, then the set point approximation is, uh, is, it becomes exact. And the new set point appears. That set point satisfies this localization equations, which is called uh, uh, localization set point, or equivalently, we say uh, BPS configuration. So we need to solve uh, this equation for all the physical fermions. And this localization set point uh, was obtained. Uh, and it was quite remarkably simple. So for the vial multiplet, uh, it turns out that uh, the vial multiplet is localized to the ADS2 times S2 configuration. This is ADS2 times S2 metric. Here, L is the radius of uh, this metric, which is a scalable parameter, this can, which can be fixed to arbitrary constant by wire scaling symmetry. So we, this can be set to uh, one. And uh, then, the, then the official contribution of the uh, gravity comes in the physical metric, uh, let's say uh, capital G mu nu, from the scalar of the, in the vector multiplet through its Kellogg potential, because uh, the relation between this physical metric and by, uh, metric and by multiplet is related by this uh, Kellogg potential vector. And this scalar yeah, is in uh, vector multiplet. So in the vector multiplet sector, the solution, localization solution is also obtained, which is labeled by one parameter, let's say C, for each multiplet. So our pioneering work in this direction was done by uh, Deborka, Gomez, and Murthy. And uh, this is the uh, uh, general, uh, general localization result of the quantum entropy function. And here phi is the uh, uh, redefinition of uh, classical set, uh, set point parameter. And this part is a uh, uh, classical action on the set point. 
uh, after after uh, a renormalization, and this part is a uh, one loop determin determinant part. And then these people uh, considered some n equal to truncation of n equal a superiority with some assumption of uh, one loop partition function, and considered um, microstate counting of one a BPS black hole in type two theory in uh, T six. And they showed that uh, the integration over saddle point uh, would give very precise agreement, uh, which, which will give uh, better functions. But uh, there, has, uh, there was something uh, to be more understood. Like, uh, obviously, apparently, this one loop uh, partition function uh, should be understood. Because uh, uh, the classical, yeah, this measure in the classical integration will be given through the all the computation of uh, one, loop one loop determinant. So later, uh, myself and my collaborator, and uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, another, these people showed that this one loop determinant has uh, the following uh, universal form. This is given by the uh, Keller potential on the set point with some coefficient. And for the vector multiplet and hypermultiplet case, uh, this number is this number is uh, obtained as a, uh, this one, one over twelve, and which agrees with the Unser perturbative computation uh, obtained by Ashok Sen. So now, uh, yeah, we want to uh, look at uh, uh, the one loop computation for gravity multiplet, which is a uh, genuinely uh, gravity uh, computation in in the context of context of localization. And yeah, yeah in, in some sense, we already know this answer because uh, we can, this should be consistent with the perturbative computation by Ashok Sen, this one. So we want to know how and whether it really reproduces the, this consistent result. So yeah, so to, uh, to, to reach this result, uh, we uh, have addressed uh, Two main questions. So before that, you know, is there any question? Okay, yeah. The first question is, uh, what is the uh, meaning of global charge Q equivariant in supergravity? Actually, this question was addressed uh, in the uh, previous talk by Bernard. But uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. Let me repeat this uh, question again because this is very essential in our uh, um, yeah, our computation, and I show the uh, re uh, application to n equal to super gravity. And the confusion, main confusion, may may comes from the from the uh, usual uh, slogan that uh, there is no global supersymmetry uh, in a theory of gravity. That is in super gravity. Uh, supersymmetry is also gauged, which is not a, a real symmetry of uh, functional integral. But yeah, this slogan is actually not uh, uh, always true. This this is uh, when it comes to the uh, space when it com comes to space-time symmetry. So the global symmetry comes from the some yeah. We fix, if we fix the background, and yeah, in the computational partition function we always have to fix the boundary condition. So we, we set the background as this boundary condition, then the global supercharge Q equivariant is inherited from the symmetry of this uh, background. Then uh, it's a kind of problem of uh, background field method. So we split the gravitational field into background part and quantum part, and we need to define uh, the the action of this global supercharge on the uh, quantum fluctuation. So there is another interpretation of this uh, uh, global charge, uh, which uh, was usually obtained in the case of supersymmetric gauge theory. Uh, for BRST contagion in the supersymmetric gauge theory, uh, we have, yeah, in many examples, we have used the equivalent charge as the combination of uh, rigid supercharge and BRST charge, such that uh, Q equivalent scale become uh, a compact uh, isometric transformation. 
this combi combination was necessary because uh, only this scale of this Q charge doesn't give uh, this only isometric transformation, but also involves the gauge, gauge transformation with field-dependent parameter. So to cancel this and obtain this, we have to uh, define or we have to find the Q transformation of ghost field. In this way, then uh, we can finally uh, find out that the scale of this combined operator will give the isometric transformation. So actually, yeah, technically this is a kind of problem uh, in the uh, spore gravity uh, because this finding this Q transformation for all the, all the field, all the quantum field, including all the ghost field in spore gravity can be kind of demanding problem unless we already know the uh, general formulation of background field method. And the, the main difficulty may come from the fact that the algebra in spore gravity is not the algebra, but the soft algebra. That means uh, the structure cons is constant is not a constant, but uh, field dependent. Our second question is, what are the twisted variables in spore gravity and Q cohomology? This question is for computation of one loop determinant because uh, we will use the uh, so-called index theory. So we want to classify the, all the variables, all the variables in spore gravity in this uh, uh, cohomological representation. Here, phi is some uh, bosonic variable, and psi is some fermionic variable and Q phi and Q psi is a corresponding fermion and bo bosonic variable. So we will call this phi as an elementary boson and psi is, is as an elementary fermion. And there is a natural mapping between this boson and fermion uh, we will call uh, D0, D10 operator. So once we uh, organize all the degree of freedom, all the field variables into this representation, then uh, the one loop determinant reduces to, by the simple algebra, to the determinant of this H operator, uh, comes, which, which comes from Q equivalent scale, uh, with respect to the elementary fermion and, and, and elementary portion. And this, can, uh, this, this result can be reproduced by computing the equivalent index. That index is de defined uh, by this. So this is some uh, kernel of D10 operator with, res with respect to this U1, uh, uh, U1 uh, generator H minus co kernel of D10, or equivalently uh, trace over phi uh, bosonic operator minus trace over phi of uh, many variables. So once we obtain this index, then the result will be the form of some summation over e to the some eigenvalue of h with degeneracy a n. Then uh, we can easily reproduce the uh, one loop partition function by multiplying the eigen, eigenvalues with, uh, uh, with uh, degeneracy. Therefore, uh, this information of cohomological variable, particularly uh, the variable of phi and psi, elementary position and fermion is essential in this computation. So yeah, let me recall the, uh, our main question again. So what is the Q equivalent for spore gravity? And second question is what are the elementary variable, this phi and psi? And for the first question, we will start from the background field method of BRS quantization and its modification and I'll briefly review the basic idea presented in the previous talk and show the application to n equal to spore ABT with some comment. For the second question, uh, to organize this uh, variable, it's very useful to find uh, the way of twisting of spinner variable. Here, twisting means uh, we can uh, convert the spinner variable to scalar and vector by projecting, uh, projecting some uh, killing spinners. So let me start with the background field method of BRSD quantization. 
we split all the fields, all the physical fields, as well as all the uh, ghost fields into the background part and quantum part. Here, background, uh, background field is fixed by the boundary condition or the partition function, which is usually obtained from the solution of equation of motion. And usually, this solution uh, has a redundant symmetry. For example, uh, diffeomorphism uh, map one solution to another solution. So for, the, for this redundant gauge symmetry, we need uh, uh, also a uh, ghost field for this uh, redundant symmetry, which is for background symmetry. Then the usual BRC transformation for, for full fields can be written in uh, this form, simply replaced uh, by all ghost fields into the total, total ghost field and total physical field. And it, this is, of course, uh, uh, important. And uh, now the question is uh, how to read of the uh, transformation of the uh, fluctuating quantum field. It's very, it's very natural if you start from this uh, full transformation. It's, so note, just note that the background part, transformation of background part only involves the background field and uh, uh, background uh, parameter. Then this uh, uh, transformation of fluctuating field quantum field, just uh, uh, subtraction from the total transformation and uh, by the uh, background transformation. Note that uh, finding the transformation of ghost field is very simple, simply obtained. So, yeah. And if this is algebra is real algebra, that means uh, if structure function is constant, then this rule uh, will reproduce the one uh, of usual background field, field method in field theory. Now, yeah, we want to modify this BRT, uh, BRT uh, symmetry. So consider we completely uh, fix the background by using the background symmetry by gauge fix, completely gauge fixing the background symmetry. Then uh, there is no background background value for ghost field, except uh, isometric transformation. So to choose this uh, background part of ghost to be an isometric parameter, uh, in, uh, in this case, this will be the killing spinner. Then this uh, uh, background part symmetry transformation will go away. And uh, one comment is that uh, for non-compact space, this isometric parameter is not normalizable, so this is no longer gauge symmetry. If we consider the uh, compact space, then this uh, isometric parameter, uh, maybe this is constant, is normal, still normalizable, so this is still redundant gauge symmetry, so we need to introduce additional ghost for ghost, but in our case, for non-compact space case, we don't need to introduce additional ghost for ghost field. Now, uh, this uh, background part of uh, ghost field, which is just isometric parameter, so uh, we, we, we can uh, impose this variation of this parameter to be zero. And this is really a def deformation. Then the, uh, this algebra equivalently closes to, to bosonic symmetry with rigid parameter uh, given by like this. Now we also have to look at uh, the transformation of the anti-ghost field and auxiliary field. Uh, we can find out the transformation rule in such a way that the, the algebra closed in the same way as the, the other field. But uh, uh, there's one exception. The algebra for B field will involve uh, some additional term. Uh, which contains the derivative of, of this structure function. And yeah, if this structure function was constant, then the algebra is completely closed. But it is possible by, by the observation that this index beta comes from the bosonic symmetry. And, the, uh, and this uh, structure function only com comes from the commutator between bosonic symmetry and, and boson or fermion symmetry. In the, yeah, fortunately, in the case of supergravity, that kind of thing happens. 
generically, for supergravity, softness of this structure function appears only from the anti-commutator of, of supersymmetries. So if one of the index is from the bosonic symmetry, then uh, this is constant. So this, this is not a, a kind of general proof, but kind of it's an observation. But yeah, in the case of, of our example, there is uh, n equal to superconformal super gravity. Uh, we have shown that uh, this is really a constant. And the modified BRST transformation gives the equivalent symmetry in this form. You know, uh, the isometry transformation with a uh, killing vector with other bosonic symmetry, uh, where the parameter is given by this. Uh, now we can also consider meta coupling uh, to the supergravity. And this general formulation can be also applied uh, to the same, in the same manner when meta coupled to supergravity. And this formulation systemized the construction uh, of the equivalent charge that was constructed in the supersymmetric, various supersymmetric gauge theory cases. Uh, that is, if we take a rigid limit of the supergravity coupled to, for example, yang mu theory, then that's, this recovers the transformation of the uh, field theory uh, obtained in various uh, places. Here, note that the uh, one subtle thing was the uh, Q transformation of ghost field, uh, particularly the rigid supersymmetry transformation of ghost field uh, was, is reproduced by uh, this part. Now, uh, well, now we have the uh, definition of Q equivalent charge. So now we want to find the uh, organization of all fields into the representation of this cohomological uh, complex. This organization is kind of, can be thought, uh, thought as a, a change of variable. So uh, to make sense of change of variable, uh, this uh, change should be local and invertible. <laughs> and uh, uh, to find this uh, uh, change of variable, uh, we need to find an appropriate choice of twisting of spinners. Because uh, the way of twisting of spinner is not unique. So we need to, uh, yeah, we will be able to uh, find this uh, choice of twisting such that we can find the cohomological variable and this change of variable is non-singular. So this is the procedure how we found, find the uh, twisted variable and then uh, cohomological uh, classification. Let's start from choosing one way of twisting of spinners and make sure that this twisting, this twisting is also kind of uh, a re field redefinition so that uh, make sure that this uh, redefinition is invertible. And start with a, a given component of boson in some representation of representation, representation R of gauge group or Lorentz symmetry or R symmetry, et cetera, or start from fermion and consider a variation of this uh, bosonic field which may be very complicated, maybe composite combination of other bosons and fermions with some uh, coefficient made of killing spinners and background, background value, of, value of field. And in this complicated uh, uh, combination, uh, try to find a single term, single fermionic term, uh, which has same representation with uh, this bosonic field R. Uh, and which linearly appears. This single term, fermionic term, should not involve any derivative, also any coefficient, uh, coefficient, uh, uh, should, I mean, uh, coefficient involving this uh, single term should be regular, otherwise the invertibility will not be guaranteed. So if we can find such uh, a fermionic term, uh, then uh, we can classify this bosonic variable as an elementary boson and uh, may exclude this uh, fermion from the elementary fermionic variable. And keep this process until the end. If we fail, then 
we may choose a wrong uh, way of twisting. So we try reconsider twisting and pro keep procedure again again. And this is kind of a uh, uh, change of variable which, which contains linear term and nonlinear term. And uh, this procedure to ensure that this linear term is uh, regular transformation. So the, this procedure guaranteed invertibility if uh, we consider small fluctuation. So yeah, for the case of large fluctuation, we just assume uh, it holds, the invertibility holds, yeah, even for large fluctuation. For example, uh, let's take an uh, U1 gauge multiplet. So vector multiplet has uh, this gauge field and complex color and gauge node and three, uh, uh, three auxiliary field. This has uh, nine plus eight degree of freedom. And uh, for the BRST quantization, we add U1 ghost multiplet, which has one plus two degree of freedom. So we total have 10 plus 10 degree of freedom. So we choose a way of twist the variable using the, uh, some, uh, some production by this uh, fermionic basis. And we, ha we got some uh, scala and vector and uh, some tensor. And uh, this inverse relation is given by this. So inverse is guaranteed. So this is invertible. Actually, you could have choose, uh, uh, used another way of twisting. Uh, using uh, another set of uh, basis, spinner bases. But yeah, once we find one, uh, one uh, cohomological variable using one way of twisting, then this may be enough to get uh, the result. And the other way of twisting will give the uh, same result, same result of partition function. So, the, mm, so, so now investigate the variation and uh, following the previous procedure that I presented. So, so now that the 10 plus 10 degree of freedom falls into a representation of equivariant algebra. So uh, we found the elementary boson to be gauge field and one of the uh, scalar field and fermion, elementary fermion to be the some uh, fermionic uh, field and ghost field. This is by looking at this uh, uh, symmetry transformation. So just yeah, looking at the uh, transformation of elementary boson, we get the uh, linear term of the, uh, uh, this fermion without any uh, singular coefficient. Also, uh, starting from elementary fermion, we get this linear term with regular coefficient. And uh, this, uh, starting from this fermion, we get the auxiliary field with regular coefficient. Now we want to uh, classify uh, this variable for bimultiplet case. So bimultiplet involves this uh, graviton and gravitino, and all the isometry gauge field uh, for, uh, for isometry, also auxiliary tense field and fermion and uh, scalar field. So this was uh, 24 plus 24 degree of freedom. If we gauge, uh, if we remove the uh, gauge redundancies, but for the uh, BRT contingent, we want to look at all the degree of freedom, which is the 43 plus 40 degree of freedom, if we keep all degree of freedom. So now we add 51 plus 54 goes to degree of freedom. This is quite many. And total, we have 94 plus 94 uh, degree of freedom. And similar classification uh, can be done as the representation of equivariant algebra. And this is the uh, yeah, table of bimultiplet field. For the yeah, general coordinate transformation, we get uh, field by, I mean, met, uh, graviton as a gauge field, and we have get various uh, gauge field, and these are composite. And we have an uh, auxiliary field with this degree of freedom. And we add all the ghost multiplet for all the gauge symmetries. And we have total this much of uh, degree of freedom. Now we want to find the uh, twisted variable. So by projecting of killing spinners, this set of bases or this set of bases, we uh, kind of uh, using the trial and error, we found, the, found one choice of twisting. 
for uh, gravitino and uh, auxiliary uh, uh, fermion and ghost, ghost field for spur uh, component symmetry and uh, Poincaré uh, spur symmetry. And these are all invertible. And then we look at the variation of all fields. Uh, it looks quite complicated. We can write, uh, we wrote down all the transformation rule, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, write down this in terms of twisted variable and try to uh, try the uh, cohomological classification following the previous uh, rule. And the result is following. We got elementary boson uh, in this case, and we got elementary fermion, uh, including this, uh, the, all this field, by looking at this uh, transformation rule. For example, starting from uh, graviton, we got some twisted variable of gravitino plus some nonlinear term. And starting from uh, twisted variable of gravitino, we got some ghost field and gauge field, which is, uh, which is yeah, regular. One interesting thing is that uh, the transformation of this tensor field uh, will uh, give some weird way of transformation involving this uh, twisted variable of auxiliary uh, fermion. Because in terms of SU2 cross SU2 cross SU2 asymmetry representation, this is from a uh, uh, Lorentz symmetry and this is a SU2 asymmetry. That representation is 131 and 311, but this uh, chi field is 113. But yeah, the twisting procedure uh, given by this uh, killing spinner maps uh, this auxiliary field to uh, uh, this uh, tensor, auxiliary tensor field, depending on the point, point uh, of the manifold. So uh, the, in the point where some of killing spinner is vanishing, then the other uh, the other uh, combination is mapped to this. So yeah, let me, uh, I'll explain this twisting procedure uh, later again. Now, we want to uh, compute index, and from there we want, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, this is kind of, <laughs> <laughs> we will use, yeah, Atia both fixed point for me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, Atia both fixed point formula tells us that uh, the index computation reduced to the uh, summation on the computation on the only uh, fixed point of the this uh, bosonic generator. Here, x tilde I mean fixed point means x tilde x coordinate doesn't move uh, under the this edge transformation. Uh, in our case, there are two fixed points. One is uh, the center of AGS2 together with a north pole of S2. The other is center of AGS2 together with south pole of A S2. So at this fixed point, uh, the twisting uh, procedure happened. So twisting between uh, SU2 R symmetry and one of the SU2 in the Lorentz group, uh, uh, the yeah, twisting of them happen. So at the fixed point, uh, yeah, look at, let's look at the chiral part and anti-chiral part of killing spinner. That is reduced to reduced to following way. So at no spore, uh, here at type equal zero and psi equal zero, then uh, one of the killing, one of the killing spinner become zero. And, uh, and at South Pole, the opposite part of the killing spinner becomes zero. So this, uh, this killing spinner relates, I mean, this uh, relates uh, this SU2 asymmetry and SU2, SU2, one of the, I mean, yeah, more precisely, yeah, identified with inverse of SU2 minus at North Pole and inverse of SU2 plus at South Pole. So that uh, at the North Pole and South Pole, we classified all the representation of all the uh, uh, cohomological variables, uh, elementary cohomological variables. So, so yeah, th yeah, this is the um, 
all the representation yeah, in terms of this twisted representation, twisted group uh, for, uh, for boson and fermion. And once we uh, know this uh, representation, then it's very straightforward to obtain the, uh, I, mean, I mean, this trace. The result, yeah, using the Atiyabot fixed point, point formula. And the result will, yeah, we will get, we will get this kind of result. And by expanding this, and read up the eigenvalue and uh, degeneracy, then uh, we can read off the uh, contribution to the uh, one-loop determinant, and then obtain this coefficient. Actually, th we got uh, 11 over 12. And uh, there's more. Uh, recall that yeah, there is overall zero mode contribution uh, of the bimultiplet. Yeah, vector multiplet also has, and also, and bimultiple also has zero mode contribution. This was studied by Ashok Sen. And this zero mode contribution means kind of a uh, pure, pure gauge, pure gauge field, but this parameter is non normalizer field. So that this is not gauge symmetry, and we cannot neglect this. We should take into account this contribution to the partition function. So by Ashok study, uh, uh, they, yeah, he obtained the, this zero mode contribution to be uh, one. <coughs> so by adding this, we obtain uh, this this uh, very happy number, which is consistent with uh, onshore computation. Now, yeah, let me summarize my uh, uh, talk and give brief. Uh, uh, give, I'll give brief outlook. So we have constructed equivalent supercharge for n equal two supergravity case, and classified a uh, cohomological variable with appropriate uh, definition of twisting of variables. And the index computation gives one loop for bimultiplet, which agrees with onshore perturbative computation. And we hope that uh, this work brings some clarity to idea of twisting and localization in supergravity. And it may be useful in other direction also, like other system, uh, like uh, ADS, ADS uh, CFT correspondent, correspondent in other dimensions. Also, it would be interesting to find the relation, oh, something, mystery, mystery, yeah, I type. Some relation between twisty, twisting of our gravity and some uh, topological uh, gravity. Thank you for your attention.